By the end of the 19th century, with the era of Southern Reconstruction in the rearview mirror of the nation, the United States had begun establishing itself as a world power. The country spanned across the continent and almost 200,000 miles of railroad lines connected the nation's major cities. Oil and steel were being produced in massive quantities, fueling the economy, and cities were now beginning to become electrified. President William McKinley, the last of five Civil War veterans to serve in the White House, was re-elected in 1900 on a platform of national prosperity. But in September of 1901, he was shot by an anarchist. McKinley succumbed to his wounds and Vice President Theodore Roosevelt was sworn in as President of the United States of America. But it was less than three months later when another murder would capture the national media's attention. This time, a beautiful young woman from the town of Elizabeth City, North Carolina, who disappeared from her family's home in a tragic tale filled with eerie twists and turns, an eccentric clairvoyant, and a mysterious letter sent from hundreds of miles away, claiming to have answers to the mysteries surrounding her death. Mysteries that still exist today, more than a century later. My name is Brandon Schecksneider, and you are listening to Southern Gothic. Ella Maud Cropsey was born in July of 1882 in Brooklyn, New York. But in 1898, the young girl's parents, William and Mary Louise, moved her and their family south to Elizabeth City, North Carolina, a community of about 3,500 on the Pasquotank River. Several decades prior, in 1870, the first inception of the Norfolk Southern Railroad had been established, and by 1880, this rail line began connecting the city of Norfolk, Virginia to Edenton, North Carolina, passing directly through Elizabeth City. The new modern form of transportation opened up tremendous economic opportunities in the region, catalyzing the local lumber and shipbuilding industries and by the turn of the century, Elizabeth City would begin a new age of prosperity. Of course, like many of the Northerners who had been attracted to the South in the decades following the Civil War, cheap farming land in the region is what brought William Cropsey there. He had been a profitable merchant in New York and saw the opportunities that Elizabeth City had to offer. So he purchased a beautiful Victorian home known as Seven Pines, located on 65 acres of land near the bank of the Pasquotank River. There, the Cropsey family would settle into the Southern life. And William's two beautiful teenage daughters, Ella and Olive, nicknamed Nell and Ollie, quickly attracted the attention of many of the local Southern suitors. The pair soon found themselves in serious relationships with two well-to-do young men. 
Within a year of the move, Nell, who's often described as having a spirited personality and stunning beauty, entered a relationship with Jim Wilcox, a man who was five years her senior and the son of the local sheriff. The relationship went on for several years, but Wilcox seemed reluctant to propose to Nell, who many have claimed was starting to grow restless in her desire for a family and a home of her own. Unfortunately for this beautiful young woman, this desire would never be fulfilled. On the night of November 20th, 1901, Jim Wilcox and Roy Crawford, Ollie's longtime suitor, spent the evening with the two Cropsey sisters at the family's home. But at about 11 o'clock, as the evening came to a close, Jim asked Nell to step outside with him on the front porch so that he might speak to her alone. About 45 minutes passed and Roy departed, claiming the couple was no longer on the porch so Ollie retired to bed, believing her sister was sleeping as well. Tragically, she would never see her sister alive again. But it wasn't until much later that night before the family would realize that something was terribly wrong. The story goes that the Cropsies were awoken by their neighbor yelling, alerting them that someone was trying to steal a hog from the pen in their backyard. The entire family awoke and rushed downstairs. It was then that they realized Nell was not there. Mrs. Cropsey was terrified, but her husband, maybe more preoccupied by the possibility of theft, consoled her, suggesting that Nell and Jim might have just eloped in the middle of the night. However, upon further inspection, none of Nell's things were missing. She had not packed any belongings or taken anything from her room to support the theory, and by morning, when she had not returned, the family was convinced that something awful may have happened to her. So they quickly alerted the local authorities. Suspicion immediately fell on Wilcox and he was questioned by the chief of police, but he insisted that he had no idea whatsoever of what had happened to his young Belle or her current whereabouts. But the chief of police was not convinced and in spite of his sheriff father's attempts to intervene, Wilcox was arrested on suspicion of kidnapping and taken to the local jail. After more prodding, Wilcox eventually admitted to the authorities that he had ended their relationship that night on the porch of the Seven Pines, returning to her a keepsake picture he had of the young woman. But he continued to claim that he left her there, crying her eyes out, but very much still alive. By this point, the community was up in arms, hastily gathering together at the Academy of Music above Mitchell's Beehive department store so that they could organize a search party to look for the young girl.
frantic search began. Law enforcement combed the forests and swamps. Bloodhounds were brought in and the river dragged, but no sign of the young woman was found. Nell's disappearance soon began drawing the attention of the national media, making newspaper headlines all along the East Coast. And within two weeks, a clairvoyant by the name of Madame Snell Newman arrived in Elizabeth City, claiming to know the whereabouts of the missing girl. The eccentric woman from Norfolk, Virginia, met with local police and began escorting them around town and the neighboring countryside, following a supposed vision she claimed to have. Newman believed that Wilcox had chloroformed Nell, wrapped her unconscious body in a blanket, and then drug her out into the country in Weeksville a small town approximately 10 miles southeast of Elizabeth City. There, he killed her and left her body in an abandoned well. With no other concrete leads to rely on, the police followed Madame Newman's advice and made an exhaustive search of every abandoned well within a 20-mile radius of Seven Pines. But tragically, their attempts proved futile, and no sign of the young girl was uncovered. But in spite of Madame Newman's incorrect claims that distracted the authorities and townspeople from searching for more relevant leads, her visions had an incredibly negative effect on the local suspicions that Wilcox was the murderer bolstering their belief that the sheriff's son knew more than he had let on. Then, on December 24th, the case took yet another turn when an unsigned letter arrived at Seven Pines, postmarked in Utica, New York. It claimed to know what had happened to Nell. The letter said that after Wilcox had left Seven Pines, Nell heard a suspicious noise in the back of the family's home. When she went to investigate, she discovered a man in the act of stealing her father's pigs from the property. Startled, the man knocked Nell unconscious, then threw her body into his boat and took off by way of the Pascatank River. Eerily enough, the anonymous correspondence also included a map of the area around Seven Pines, boldly marking the place where Nell's body could be found with an X. Three days after the arrival of this mysterious letter, Mrs. Cropsey, still obsessively spending day after day searching the riverbank near their home, spotted something floating in the water nearby. She hastily called the authorities to investigate, and now, on December 27, 37 days after Nell's disappearance, Mrs. Cropsey's beloved daughter was finally found. Nell's lifeless body was pulled from the Pascatank River in almost the exact spot where this eerie letter had claimed she would be found. autopsy was performed on the spot, and it seemed that Nell had in fact been murdered, killed from a vicious blow to her head. 
No water was found in the young girl's lungs, proving that she had died prior to being dumped into the river's water. Jim Wilcox continued to maintain his innocence, but with the discovery of Nell's body, members of the local community formed a mob and headed straight to the county jail to lynch the young man for his crimes. But for some reason, Nell's father, William Cropsey, intervened, preventing harm to the young man. Wilcox was charged with first-degree murder and tried in 1902. He was found guilty on somewhat circumstantial evidence and sentenced to hang. But the son of the local sheriff's life was saved by his lawyer, who was able to get a mistrial for his client that would eventually result in a new conviction. This time for second degree murder with a sentence of 30 years in prison. Yet oddly enough, in both trials, not once did Wilcox take the stand to tell his version of events from that fateful night. So Jim Wilcox was sent to prison. Then in 1920, North Carolina Governor Thomas Walter Bickett pardoned Wilcox, releasing him from jail after serving only 17 of the 30 years of which he was sentenced. Previously, Governor Locke Craig had twice refused to pardon the man, and Bickett had done so once before as well. But this time, it is believed that Wilcox finally broke his silence, personally informing the governor of the true explanation of Nell Cropsey's death. Unfortunately, no record was ever made of this explanation, and whatever Wilcox told Bickett that day went to the grave with both of them. Now free, Jim Wilcox returned home to Elizabeth City, but he was clearly ostracized by the community there. He became a recluse and an alcoholic, committing suicide in 1933. But legend says that before he died, Wilcox supposedly told his side of the story to one other man besides the governor a local reporter named W.O. Saunders. Saunders had gained notoriety covering Nell's murder and the subsequent trials decades earlier, but for whatever reason, Saunders never published Wilcox's explanation. He too would take that information to the grave. But tragedy continued to befall the Cropsey family. Nell's brother Will committed suicide in 1908 in a horrendous act of drinking carbolic acid in front of his wife and child. Ollie lived for several more decades, but forever heartbroken by the loss of her sister, she is said to have become an eccentric hermit continuing to dress in the Gibson girl style of 1901, freezing herself in the time when she last saw her sister alive. Ollie eventually passed away from colon cancer in 1944, and Mrs. Mary Louise Cropsey, forever heartbroken, died several years after Ollie in 1948. Many claim that Mrs. Cropsey lost her mind after all of the tragic losses she endured, finally passing away while committed to an asylum. And as for Roy Crawford, Ollie's one-time suitor, who had been present at Seven Pines on the night that Nell disappeared, he killed himself as well, putting a gun to his head and committing suicide in 1911. Of course, legend says that the spirit of Nell Cropsey 
has never left Seven Pines. Over the last century, those who've lived in the home have reported numerous strange occurrences. Everything from lights turning themselves on and off, to doors opening and shutting on their own, and water rushing from the sink without anyone having turned it on. But most intriguing of all is the appearance of Nell's visage itself. Legends claim that a girl in a white dress has been seen moving silently in Nell's old bedroom on the second floor of the home and many folks passing on the street have said that they've seen the ghostly apparition of Nell, dressed in a white dress, peering out the front window of the home from the parlor inside. Numerous theories have sprung up over the last century as to what really happened to Nell, but everyone with the knowledge of the vicious murder has taken that information to their grave. Could Nell still in fact be trying to tell her tale, wandering about her home, tormented by the lack of justice? We may never know. Today, Elizabeth City hosts an annual ghost walk in October of each year. The two-decade-old tradition is put on by the Elizabeth City Historic Neighborhood Association, and all the proceeds from the event go toward preservation efforts. But this unique event is much different than your typical ghost tour. Participants are actually brought into the historic homes and sites where they're entertained with storytelling by period actors depicting some of the most prominent and infamous residents of Elizabeth City's past. From moonshiners and celebrities to presidents and slaves. Of course, the most popular of these folks to tell their tale during the annual ghost walk is Nell Cropsey. The legacy of the young woman's tragic death still remains strong in the heart of the locals here. Yet even after a century has passed since her disappearance from Seven Pines, Nell Cropsey's death continues to remain a mystery that might never be solved. My name is Brandon Schecksneider, and you've been listening to Southern Gothic. <laughs>